Greetings and welcome to another exciting edition of Poet the Poet. I'm Robert Dunn, and besides hosting the TV show, I'm the executive editor of this little treasure over here, Medicinal Purposes Literary Review. And we have a couple of fascinating poets uh, for you today. We have Judith Werner over here and Robert Kramer over there. But before we get into them, I want to take a moment to explain where we are. We're in the Planet One Cafe, and behind me is Annette Hendricks, who is the proprietor and chef and virtually everything else you could possibly want. And I wanted to give her a chance to say hello and uh, recommend the specials. <laughs> okay, hi everybody. Uh, our favorites are uh, cauliflower peanut soup. We have Jamaican vegetable patties, mm -hmm. roti, mm -hmm. avocado rolls, colored greens, coconut rice, um, sweet potato pecan pie, and plenty other things. Mm -hmm. So so drop by and visit the Poet to Poet reading on the first Monday of the month here. It's East 7th Street, just off First Avenue in Manhattan, and the place is a lot of fun. And there are very interesting paintings on the wall, too. And I'll leave it to the poets now. Oh, yes. <laughs> Thank you, Annette, uh, for letting us come in here and uh, mentioning the cauliflower and whatnot. Now, um, the poets that we have today um, are a couple of guys I picked up on the uh, Radapalax World Tour. And uh, much, to my, uh, much to my surprise, actually, I'm kidding. I knew this all the time, is that Judith Werner is actually the senior editor. Yes. Of Radapalak, so time to hold up the, uh, the magazine. Okay. And the Radapalak World Tour, which I got to take part in some of it, uh, had stops in Philadelphia and Cambridge <laughs> and Princeton and Zanesville and, uh, and Los Angeles, which I couldn't quite get time off for, but uh, it was uh, it was a lot of fun and still going on. Right. Uh, uh -huh. Right, they were they were in Portland and mm -hmm. Seattle and mm -hmm. several places in L.A. Uh huh. Uh, hitchhiking or? <laughs> <laughs> no, the publisher Ram Devanani went uh -huh. out and mm -hmm. uh, did some readings with some of the poets uh, who came from the West Coast. Mm -hmm. And in your view, what is the philosophy of uh, Radapalax? Uh, first of all, we like to pronounce it Radapalax. That's one of the major philosophies. I told you. <laughs> I told you. <laughs> second, the second philosophy is that um, we're we're very interested in having poetry which um, uh, brings back some of the musical quality of the language, uh, and we uh, look through many submissions to try to find. Uh, a poetry that will uh, bring back a sense of uh, perhaps awe, mystery, and uh, music. Ah, and if you write a good enough poem, you can choose your own pronunciation. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, turning to you personally, um, let's see. Uh, you've got a couple of prizes. Oh, no, I want to talk about the prizes. Is the, the Lenore Marshall Poetry Prize, the Ronald J. Kemsky, Prize. Is it true what I heard about those two? <laughs> <laughs> the Lenore Marshall Prize was yeah. uh, back in the Neolithic period oh, no. of my <laughs> life. <laughs> and the Ronald uh, J. Kemsky Prize was a very sweet prize um, mm -hmm. through the Lyric uh, magazine. Someone uh -huh. had, a, had a friend who had died and just mm -hmm. endowed a little prize. And the mm -hmm. nicest thing that came from that prize was that um, we became... Um, Correspondence and still keep up a correspondence. Uh -huh. And there was even an Academy of American Poets Prize. Let me guess, they gave you a book. I think somebody else's. I <laughs> think actually they did give me a book. <laughs> that that came from the time of Stonehenge. Yes, they got it at a discount, you know, because <laughs> they have connections. Let's see. Uh, you teach a poetry course at the Caring Community. Right. What is the Caring Community? Uh, it's a senior center, mm -hmm. and uh, some of the. Uh, members of the um, mm -hmm. that course had been in a workshop that I had been in in uh, Poetry Society of America uh -huh. and as a matter of fact um, one of the poets in Radapalax uh -huh. uh, Pud Houston uh, is also in that um, in that um, course and we uh, we have a lot of fun mm -hmm. uh, looking at um, classic poems and seeing how they're put together and then trying our hands at things like um, sonnets and villanelles and mm -hmm. 
other kinds of things. Uh huh. And you're also working for Habitat for Humanity. Right. Uh, what do you do there? Uh, a little bit of everything. Do you uh, smelt the nails? That's uh, no, actually, I don't do the construction. I am uh -huh. working mostly uh, yeah. in the office yeah. and uh, trying to keep things together there. And uh, since I do have a way with words, they mm -hmm. found that out and have me working on uh, writing grants. Ah, did you get every proposal? Did you ever get to meet Jimmy Carter? I understand he writes poetry too. No, but actually, if you don't mind me putting a plug in, mm. in uh, September of the year 2000, uh -huh. Jimmy Carter is going to be here in New York uh, working on a, a, pra a house that's going to be the uh, 100,000th house that Habitat has built worldwide. 100,000. Right. Mm. So. Will you be selling tickets? <laughs> no, but I'm sure everybody can uh, participate, so keep your eyes uh -huh. and ears open for that. I'm also interested in this, uh, you also are an astrologer and a tarot card reader. That's correct. Uh, yeah, and you actually see a future in that. Right, I didn't know I was going to be here, but <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> came as a complete surprise that was, to me. That was an R deck. <laughs> <laughs> All right, how about favoring us with a poem? <laughs> okay. Uh, this poem uh, is uh, one that uh, I always think of because it's my all is vanity poem. Uh, it was um, published in a magazine that later had a website and I was very excited about that because mm -hmm. I was one of the poets picked to be uh, on their website and when uh -huh. I told my teenage son, he said, a web, he said, the World Wide Web, everybody and their grandmother is on the World Wide Web. So. <laughs> <laughs> and you started feeling sticky. <laughs> <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. And it's called In the Women's Spa. We see our bodies in the steam room, hulking through mist like great Venuses of Willendorf, monumental shapes glowing pink, tan, or brown, old ones who have given out of our flesh, blood rolling down thighs, milk down chests, perspiration inside arms, now sweating out our years, not pounds, terry towels flung aside, limbs relaxed over tile steps while condensation drips, hot as tears from the ceiling down the drain. And then in the next door sauna, stretched out on baked boards, hair wrapped in towels, underwear spread to dry. We are free to peer with wonder at our imperfect breasts, too small, too large, pendulous, some with aureoles like acorn cups around enormous fruit, or like collars on berries with nippled stems, free to marvel at imperfect legs, like trunks of trees spread wide over the landscape through seasons of continual bad weather. Only the young ones use the scales, weighing sleek silhouettes and muscles that bud like teenage boys. By now we have foregone men's tools, accustomed to failure and stealth, backed into corners, too wide to fit seats, nakedness squeezed into clothing cut, narrow even for our daughters. Soon I will blow dry and walk back to the world under wraps of its disdain. But here I am free, having rarely loved my form since I was born. Mm. Well, I have to admit, I've never been in a woman's spa myself, and Robert, I doubt that you haven't been either. Not yet. But I think you just saved us both a trip. Uh, to say nothing of a police record. <laughs> How about another poem? <laughs> okay, well, this I'm using this as an opportunity to put poems together that I think of in my mind as uh, uh, mm -hmm. a duet, but uh, have been published in widely separated places. So uh, here's your next trip to the women's spa. It's called In the Steam Room. They rub their skin with oil and with honey, they wrap their hair with towels that appear like lace mantillas through the steam, like Goya's maha desnuda on her sofa, curves of their buttocks, backs, and upper arms mold to plain surfaces, beaded coppery with drops of vapor and with perspiration. So this is what the painters yearn to capture 
through windows of their canvases, women spread languidly for no one but themselves. Here no man thinks them vessels for semen, no god spying through hairy fig leaf fingers accuses them as Eve, failed vessel for reflection of his perfect light, incarnation as sinner, being one gift he never gives himself. Half naked in tropic steam they shift, pyramids of thighs, hemispheres of stomach, sift like nudes descending a staircase to the showers, bumping and rubbing against one another's slippery skin like unnamed animals in the thickets of Eden. When painters, impotent as God to clothe himself in his model's gender, give up and expel their eaves, laughter echoes below, lilting unseen like showering women's private jokes. Hmm. Can we get a poem that's, uh, that's not in the spot? <laughs> okay. A short one. A short one, okay. Uh, this one is um, not in the spot. It's uh, okay. based upon the story of uh, Joseph from the Bible who um, had a few dreams that got him into trouble and then uh, <laughs> interpreted a few dreams that got him out of trouble. <laughs> so, and it, um, the first line was uh, given to me by my son who woke up one morning and said, I dreamed I disassembled death. Hmm. And I said, oh, I have to write that down. <laughs> So this is called Among the Brethren for Joseph the Dreamer. I dreamed I disassembled death in his many colored coat with his own scythe and strung the sheaves of his bones upon a wife of the grape's vine so he couldn't drink my breath. I saw death's eyes, 11 stars, writhe between the sun and moon and then grow cold. Though I go to slavery from the pit you rolled me in, I, the child, will yet decide which butler or baker dies. I, the weakest, grow old, dreaming the cattle fat. Love me, for I thresh good corn from bad, death's bones from flesh in sleep. I, the black sheep in your fold. Mm, my dreams get me into trouble, too. Then I have to start writing checks <laughs> rather than poems. Hey, Judith Werner, I want to thank you for coming on, Poet the Poet, and we'll be back in a moment with Robert Kramer, so please don't go away.